Good morning, everybody. A um, couple of things I want to share with you today. Um, first of all, I know that I've said this on the page before, but I'm dyslexic. So I'm a very visual learner. I find it really hard to learn with the written word. And when I'm teaching, I try and teach visually as well because it's easier for me. So when I'm explaining to people how energy works, I always kind of try and describe a picture and paint a picture for them. So how I describe how we're going to give and receive energy or absorb and deflect energy, which I spoke about last week, is um, last week I explained it in a way with my child, about my child, where if you don't run, you can't get chased. Okay, that's a really important one. It's great for kids. But with adults, if you imagine that you're facing somebody and that person who's facing you is holding a ball and they throw a ball at you, you can either choose to catch the ball or let the ball go past. Now, this statement, I, I kind of made that up myself, um, but this statement keeps being said to me all this week. A couple of people have said that to me all this week. So when you're catching the ball, you're choosing, you're making a choice to absorb that energy. But if you just let the ball pass you by, you're choosing to just not take it on and, and, and just let it pass you by and move on. Um, but that, that point brings me to an email that I received from a person the other day that I'm going to read to you because I think it's really important to share. And it actually has been, I've been approached a couple of times about this. So it's clearly a theme that needs to be discussed. So bear with me. So the person says, uh, hi Nicola, I just thought of a topic you might consider doing in the future. Unfortunately, my dad ended up in a nursing home before he died. And with me coming from a large family, Everyone said that they would do their bit, so to speak, to visit him, to take him out on day trips, whatever needed to be done. Maybe the first month or so, everyone did, and then slowly the excuses started coming. Some had work, others didn't have the time, and I get that, but they never made any effort, which I felt at the time I had to do their bit. Now, I'll just go back to the part where she said, uh, slowly making excuses. It's really important that she used the word excuse there because that's exactly what it is. What they were deciding was, this is too much hassle for me. And at the moment, I can't commit to that. So I'm just going to make it, instead of saying, look, I can't commit to that or that doesn't float my boat and I don't want to look after our dad. Instead of saying that, um, I'm being honest about the situation we, with that girl who sent this message and with themselves, they made excuses and used diversion tactics energetically. Um, in order to not step up to the plate of their responsibility. So um, I felt at the time I had to do their bit as well as my own. So she felt that she had to do other people's jobs as well as her own. But what I'll say to you is, and I say this with the utmost love, you did a brilliant job by the way, but secondly, you chose to take on that extra work for other members of your family. You cushioned them not taking responsibility. And it's very admirable that you did that, but you probably overstressed yourself at the same time. Um, I'll go into that further in a second. Um, she goes on to say, don't get me wrong. I have wonderful memories of my dad and so have my kids. A very good friend of mine said to me, you caught the ball. Meaning the rest were quite happy to let me do all of the things uh, for my dad because someone else was going to do it for them. When my dad passed away, some family members hadn't seen him in over a year and they were all devastated. So if they had not made the effort to see your father in over a year, clearly he wasn't a priority in their lives. And it's really important that we're clear on what our priorities are. And the reason why they were so devastated is because they were regretful. They were probably shamed and they were probably embarrassed. And they realized that, you know, people are not gonna be around forever. Um, the anger I felt for nearly two years has finally left me because, as I said, none of them have the happy memories and sad of seeing their dad at the end of his life. Now, the anger that she was experiencing there is all to do with disappointment. Um, but more importantly, and this, this is really, really important for people like this girl who makes the effort. And, you know, it's it's fantastic that she did that. Part of the reason why she was so angry is because she was thinking that everybody else thinks like her and they don't. 
not everybody thinks like me and that's generally how I was hurt over the years. So she was taking her head off her shoulders and putting it on theirs and hoping that they would respond the way she would. But that's an impossibility because everybody is individual and everybody thinks in a completely different way and everybody has different priorities. So they were never going to think the way you think because your head is screwed on and you did the right thing. Um, she goes on to say, my friend is going through the same thing at the moment with her family and I've explained to her the pros and cons of catching the ball. I've added my friend to your page and I'd be interested to see how other people caught the ball and dealt with it. So that's the main question here. She's looking to see if anybody else did what she did and what your experience was. Um, she, the last thing that she says is, just to add, he was very happy in the nursing home. It was just the lack of family support that got me. Again, the lack is the, um, the expectations. Um, if you have an expectation of somebody, you're leaving yourself exposed to being disappointment, disappointed. Uh, the hardest thing for me, and this is the bit that it took me, I had to read this a few times because this really, really upset me because I could really, really identify with this. The hardest thing for me was when he passed, I told my kids and my youngest asked me, does this mean, does this mean that you'll be spending more time with us now? Which breaks my heart even thinking of it and I'm getting enough in my throat even reading it. Now, I'm going to tell you a couple of things about that. Yeah, you had to sacrifice your own family for a period of time in order to look after your father. And that's actually what you're supposed to do. People are not supposed to live disconnected lives. If you think back to years ago, generations and generations of families all lived in the one home. There was grandparents looking after small children while the people in the middle of the family, the adults, were going out and being breadwinners. There was a study done in Trinity that I was involved in a couple of years ago. And the, the findings of the study was, is if the youngest of society and the oldest of society are taken care of, the middle bit generally takes care of themselves. Another thing is when we're going about our day um, and we have children in our lives, we are handing them a blueprint for how it is that you're supposed to behave in life. So what you did was you handed your children a blueprint of this is actually how you're supposed to treat the elders in your family and they will know you will be you will grow old one day and they will know that that's what you are supposed to do and um, when you have an older member in your family you're supposed to look after them that's your job and um, I remember last year I think it was we have an elderly aunt in our family she's 91 she's absolutely amazeballs you probably see me talking about her here on the page her name is Minnie and uh, she was very good to me as a child and I adore the bones of her. Um, so it's, it's our turn now to look after her because she is um, in the winter of our days, as we'd say. But last year, uh, we were going up to Bowmount for Bloods and she, she was there, obviously. Uh, my mum was there, I was there and my daughter was there. So it was four generations of, um, of the family. So we, we went off and we were speaking to a nurse and the nurse actually got really emotional. And she congratulated us on having so many people involved um, in bringing my elderly aunt to have the bloods done because she said what I just said. Um, it's very important that every member of the family realises that this is what you're supposed to be doing for the elderly members of your family. Um, and, you know, really affirmed for me that we were doing the right thing. Um, and I'm always saying to my little one, you have to look after me when I'm old. And she's like, yes, I will, ma'am. Um, there's another thing that I wanted to say to you is, which is a rarity. Uh, you saw me speaking about on the page a couple of weeks ago that there was a woman in my life called Mrs. Gorman and she was my Nana's friend and I never met my Nana. So she was kind of the closest thing that I had. She'd tell me stories about her. But unfortunately, Mrs. Gorman passed away and I went to her at the funeral and it was absolutely beautiful. But there was one thing that happened in that church that I've been to too many funerals um, in my life. But there was one thing that happened in that church that I'd never seen happening before. A family member got up and stood on the altar and addressed the church and said that she wanted to pay tribute to every single member of her family. Because Mrs. Gorman was in a nursing home for nine years. And at the start of those nine years, there was a schedule made and every family member had to row in. Not that they had to, they wanted to. They wanted to row in. Um, it didn't matter what age they were. Um, 
they all had jobs and they all, Mrs. Gorman was visited every single day, by the way, for nine years by one of our family members. She was never left alone. And even the children that were too young to visit, they had jobs at home. They had to pick up the ball, they had to hang out the washing, they had to get the dinner on, light the fire, whatever it was. But it is a rarity for something like that to happen. But that's what I aspire to. And I think that this is what this girl aspires to too. So um, that's all I'll say about that for the moment. But what I will say to you is to open up the question. Have you had a situation in your family where you had to catch the ball? Or did you have a situation in your family where you weren't in a position to catch the ball? Because I'm coming from my side of the situation where I caught the ball and I took responsibility. This girl did too. And I'd like to hear the other side of the story of if you can't or you choose to not or whatever the circumstances was. So I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day and I hope that was useful to you to some degree. Take care. Slam.